so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Well, bless God, I got a word for you coming from the book of Joel, the second chapter and the 21st verse, where the Bible says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. And here's where I got excited about the text. Not only does it translate, has done anything, but the Bible declares, hallelujah, in the translation that he will do great things. So come on and go with me as we look into the word of God. The Bible says, again in the book of Joel, the second chapter and the 21st verse, Fear not, O Lord, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. So says the Lord, therefore, it's already done. Father, thank you so much for opening up our eyes to see, Father, all of the wondrous things that you have done and opening up our spiritual lives, God, that we might see in the future prophetically that you're going to do great things in the future, Father God. So I praise you and I thank you, Father God, for enlightening us, Father, for showing us that your heart, God, showing us that you love us, God, showing us that you do want us to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers, God. So you're con Concerned not only about our soul, but for our material things as well. So I bless you today for this lesson, Father, and I pray it come forth in power. I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you anoint the ears of your people, God, that they might hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying, Father. And I come against everything, God, that would try to block right now. I pray you put a hedge of protection around your people, Father, causing them, God, God to be able to concentrate on your word, Father, God. Bless the hearers of the word, Father God. Bless the doers of the word, Father God. Oh, and bless those, Father God, that have sat at your feet at this moment, Father, to hear what you have to say. So I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. Hallelujah. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, God, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Joel, it tells the story about how God had sent some insects into the land and how the locusts had devoured the land of the people. And it got their attention, obviously, because they began to cry out to the Lord. And I want you to know today, when you begin to, when you're in a situation, you begin to cry out to the Lord, guess what? God's going to hear your prayer. And not only will God hear your prayer, but God's going to answer your prayer. And he's going to tell you exactly what he's going to do and in this case what he has already done and that's what again I got excited about this text uh, but it talks about not only what he has done but what he shall do and all you have to do is look back over your life look over your life and see what God has done in the past uh, and because you know that God was faithful in the past uh, guess what you can look at this trial and you can say uh, God has delivered me uh, from the things of the past and I know that my God is faithful to deliver me today. He is a faithful God and here's what I like prophetically about this text if you go a little deep and if you think about you know what uh, what it means and what our God has already done. Do you know that God has already planned out everything in eternity? Everything has already been planned out in your life. God said he knew you before you knew yourself. God said he formed you in the belly of your mama. Hallelujah. He knew you. He had already ordained you before the foundations of the world. So if we have a God that has already prepared way before even time began, don't you know that we're just walking through this life? It's already done. And so prophetically, even though the scripture says what he has done and what he will do, that's just giving you a little hope. Hallelujah. Because if you look at it prophetically, everything is already done. You are just walking through.
through. And sometimes, you know, you walk into some things that God has to grab your attention. But blessed be the name of our God that we can rejoice. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God that is tender hearted. We serve a God. Hallelujah. That when he gets ready for them insects to be gone, guess what? He just says the word be gone. Hallelujah. You got some little things in your life that are trying to eat up your harvest. I want you to just say for a second, be gone. Hallelujah. Speak prophetically to those things because the hour has come and God is saying to you today, just say be gone. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, walk through your house. Hallelujah. And just say be gone. Those things that are trying to infest your children. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, be God. Hallelujah. Speak to your finances. Those things that are trying to eat up your finances. Just say in the name of Jesus, be God. Hallelujah. Because God has sent the word unto you today. Hallelujah. That he has commanded those things that are in your life. Trying to destroy. Hallelujah. Trying to eat up your harvest. Hallelujah. And when we respond that way. He moves on our faith. That's why God gives us these messages. That's why he speaks to us because he wants to build your faith. He wants to build your hope. When you look at the word of God, it begins to build hope and build faith in you again. And that's what our God wants to do. Jesus said when he returned, will he find faith? Will he find the people of God, hallelujah, full of faith? Will he find you like those virgins that had the oil burning, hallelujah? Is he going to find you that way? He's trying to help you out in this text because if we read a little further, let me read on in the text. Verse 22 says of Joel, the second chapter, do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up. God is doing a new thing and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. God said to you today, they're going to begin to yield their strength again. He's going to produce. He's bringing forth a harvest again. Hallelujah. And this time, hallelujah, the enemy won't be able to eat it up. He says, be glad then, you children of Zion. Be glad today, hallelujah, because you serve a God that can turn it around in any instance. He said, and rejoice in the Lord, your God. Hallelujah, rejoice in the Lord. That's why we can be glad in any situation that we face. Huh? Because, you know, even though situations change, our God will never change. Hallelujah. So you can always revert back to being glad glad in God. Hallelujah. That's one thing that the enemy cannot touch. Hey, that's one thing that will always remain strong. One aspect of our life is that God will always be on the throne. He says, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. That's what he said. He did it in the past and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. He did it before. Guess what? He going to do it again. Bless his holy name. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vast shall overflow with new wine and oil. Can you use a blessing today, both spiritually and materially? God is a God that not only wants our souls to prosper, but he wants us to be prosperous in this life as well. So know today it is already done. Hallelujah. And I speak to those things in your life that are trying to eat up your harvest and I say to them by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus to be God. Receive it today in the mighty name of You know, I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was 
was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.